Hello everybody, my name is Mr Benart, I'm the head teacher of uh, this fantastic school and I'd like to extend a really warm welcome to our New Year 7s, uh, their parents and their carers to our fantastic school. Um, firstly I'd like to tell you a little bit about our school. <clears throat> um, our school is built on traditional values and um, the mutual respect between students and staff. We, are, we have extremely high standards and we expect our students to be polite and courteous at all times. And this is what we call the Morning School Way. And during this video you're going to hear a few more things about our fantastic school and a few more things about the Morning School Way. I'd like to say what the Morning School Way means for, um, for our students in school. One of the key things about the Morning School Way is extremely strong pastoral support. We believe that our students are part of a family and our house system in the school is very strong. Every single student in our school is a, is a member of a house and they have a guidance manager and a head of house who are there to support them and reassure them at all times. I think that's really important for our New Year 7s coming up to know that there's someone there that will look out for them and will help them if ever they're concerned, whatever they're worried. We also value personal development at our school and enrichment opportunities. A big part of the Morning School way is that we don't believe school is just about getting grades. We ensure our students are really well prepared and we ensure our students have the, have the best lessons they possibly can, but we want them to be well-rounded individuals ready for the world of work. So personal development is extremely important to us. We're really lucky at our school because we have brilliant facilities and we have really thought hard about ensuring that every single student in our school develops their character and is extremely well motivated and ready for the world of work. The third thing is having an ambitious, exciting curriculum that's accessible to all students. We, we see our curriculum, the things that we teach our students, as something which is really, really important to us. We're always working on it. Our teachers work really hard in planning the best possible lessons to give our students the, the um, uh, amazing experience that they have in class. And so, for us, that is something which we're extremely proud of and we keep working on all the time. And finally, it's the, it's the staff in the school. We have exceptional teachers that are strict, consistent and caring. Our staff are um, the, the kind of staff which will always go above and beyond. They, um, they love working in the school, they are fantastic, extremely dedicated and I am very, very lucky to have such a talented group of staff and I feel that together we give our students the best possible opportunities and experiences as being part of that school. I also want to say something about what the Morning School Way means about students and I think it's, it boils down to three things. The first thing we want our students to be is the best person they can be every lesson, every day. So for, for our students we expect them to try hard and put 100% effort in at all times. We expect this because we really care about them and, and we want our students to come in and, and do their best and try their best. We also want our students to be kind to each other and also demonstrate excellent behaviour. One of the things I think Year 7s are most worried about when they come into school is maybe being bullied by other students. And I want to say that bullying has absolutely no place in the morning school. We have um, really, really strong values around being kind, togetherness and respect. And we ensure that if we ever hear of any uh, problems or any issues, we deal with those and make sure they're sorted out very, very quickly. And finally, and most importantly, we know that the, the Year 7s will work hard, but we want, want them to enjoy school. We want to see our students smiling and happy. Um, we believe that um, our school is a happy and caring environment. Our staff are really happy to be here. We, we, we all love teaching here and, and we know that your children, our new students, will be extremely happy at the morning school and we, we encourage them to take all the fantastic opportunities that they'll have. I really hope you enjoy the rest of this video and you'll be extremely excited about the opportunities you'll have at the morning school and I can't wait uh, to meet you all in September and to see you properly. Thank you. Hello everyone, welcome to the morning school. My name is Mr Chidwick and I'm Senior Deputy Head Teacher. I'm going to talk to you about the curriculum which is broad and balanced and focuses on depth as well as breadth. We cover a range of subjects including the core of English, Maths and Science, the humanities, the arts, the technologies, PE, performing arts, and a range of other things through personal development. One of our things we really pride ourselves on is our ability to cover all of those subjects for as long as possible. We value breadth for as long as we can, and that means we have a thorough options process that takes place at the end of year nine, ready for year 10, where we have a range of subjects available for all students. 
One thing that we also make sure we do is provide good careers guidance for all of our students so that they know what pathways are available to them and where they can go from the end of year 11, whether that's sit form here or to go elsewhere for meaningful employment or training. Through our sit form, we offer the IBDP and the IBCP programme, which values a range of subjects. And we also have languages at the heart of our offer. We want all students to study languages for as long as possible and students in year 10 will be expected to choose a language as part of their options process. The implementation of our curriculum focuses on powerful knowledge and we do this through expert teaching in the classroom as well as providing brilliant resources for students to use at home. And this comes in the form of a booklet that's available for every single subject for every single year group. And what students can do with this is use it at home to enrich their learning that happens in school, as well as to do some pre-reading and pre-learning for lessons that take place in school. This will include a knowledge organiser that sets out the key knowledge needed for success in every subject, as well as enriching texts and articles that will help enrich their experience and widen their experience for each subject area. We also make sure that our teachers deliver using researched and well-proven te techniques in the classroom to ensure that students make the best of the subjects available to them. Assessment is really important for us at the morning school. We use it so that teachers can be informed of strengths and areas for development for every single student. This is done through low stakes quizzing and testing in regular le lessons so that students can practice what they've learned at home and in previous lessons. We also have termly assessments which will help identify gaps in knowledge as well as cumulative assessments which can be completed twice a year in every subject area and this builds on prior learning from previous terms and previous weeks and also informs the teachers of where to go next. Thank you for listening and we look forward to welcoming you at the morning school. Hello and welcome to the Morning School. Uh, my name is Paul Williams. I'm the Deputy Head Teacher in charge of all pastoral affairs in the school, which essentially means that I'm in charge of attendance, behaviour, student welfare and personal development. I'm sure you've already heard several members of staff mention something that is absolutely fundamental to the Morning School, and that is the Morning School way. And a lot of what I do within my pastoral role centres around the Morning School way and why that is so important to us. But I want to talk about a few things regarding expectations uh, for the students that will be starting with us in September. And I often get asked these questions by parents and carers, so I thought it would be worth spending some time going through them one at a time. And the first one is attendance and punctuality. At the Morning School, we do expect a very high standard of attendance and punctuality. We expect every student to be in school for 97% of the school year. Now that's a very high percentage, but what we always say is that if a student misses 5% of a whole school year, then data is very robust, which shows that actually the levels that that young person achieves would be one whole level lower than they would otherwise achieve if they were in school for 100%. So if somebody is not in school, we will follow up with a text and a phone call um, and we will expect medical evidence for anybody who is not absent from school. And we always do this in a very supportive way, but we do expect attendance to be very good. And on that same note, we expect punctuality to be very good as well. Students are expected on school site at 8.45 every morning. That's when the first bell will go. They will then make their way to their relevant classroom and the teacher will be waiting at the door for them. There is a bell system and there are two bells at the start of each lesson, at the end of break time and at the end of lunch time. And as soon as students hear that first bell, there is an expectation that they start moving to their classroom. And by the time the second bell goes, we would expect all students to be lined up outside their classroom or indeed having already entered their classroom because the teacher will be at the door giving them instructions. Uniform and equipment is also something that we have very high standards regarding at the Morling School. Full uniform has to be worn every single day and that is an absolute given in any secondary school. But one thing that we insist on is that that uniform is worn in a very smart way. So for example, if a student chooses to wear a shirt and a tie, the top button must always be done up on the shirt. That shirt must always be tucked in. A tie must be worn at a correct length and the correct length is very simple to determine because on the school tie that you will see in this video there is a school badge and that badge must be visible below the knot. 
which means that the school tie will always be the right length. Tailored trousers must be worn and plain black leather shoes must be worn. So there are no trainers, no other footwear is allowed. We do this in order to maintain very high standards at the morning school because this is just one way that we can ensure students follow the morning school way. Homework is issued on a regular basis as well. It's one question we often get asked about, especially with our new students in September. There will be a lot more detail about homework given to you, but homework will be issued and it will be ranging from doing Hegarty Maths, which is an online maths programme that students use, to using their terminally knowledge organisers and home learning books, to also using work that is submitted on Microsoft Teams. But there will be a lot more information coming your way about that soon. Now, the biggest thing that I often get asked about in my role as a deputy teacher pastoral are behaviour expectations. And I think it's worth just spending some time talking about our standards with regards to behaviour. Now, at the Morning School, we operate a system which I consider to be very strict. It is very consistent, but importantly, I think it's worth noting that it is very caring. Now, some people have referred to this as a very old fashioned way of uh, dealing with behaviour. I prefer to think of it as a very traditional way of dealing with behaviour. So I'll say again, it is strict and it is very consistent, but the real strength of our school is that all of our staff, not just the teachers, every single member of staff adopts a, a non-confrontational, caring, positive approach to dealing with behaviour. So I just wanted to go through what will happen in classrooms with the young children and the students when they arrive in September. We follow a system at the Morley School called SWAT, S-W-A-T. It's a very simple system and it's one that every single student will become very familiar with very soon because this is what every single member of staff follows in the classrooms. What will happen is if the student, for whatever reason, does not meet our expectations in a classroom. And I'll give an example. If a teacher is talking at the start of a lesson and a student is not fully focused on what that teacher is saying, um, or they may well be even trying to communicate with another student in their class, their name will appear on the board underneath the letter S, the S of SWAT. And that member of staff will very quickly just state to that child what it is that they are doing wrong. That will be done in a non-confrontational way. It won't be a way that embarrasses a child in front of the class, but it will just state what it is that they have done that is wrong. The lesson will then continue. However, hypothetically, if that student then five minutes later, 10 minutes later in the lesson, does something again which does, does not meet our expectations, their name will be put under the letter W and they will be warned of the consequences if they continue to behave in the way that they are. So their name will be under the S and the W. If indeed they then do something wrong for the third time, their name will be put under the A, the A of SWAT, and a sanction will be applied in the classroom. A very simple sanction, which means that that student will be asked to move seats. They will be told to pick up their bag, pick up their equipment, and move to a different seat in the classroom. Every classroom will have a set seating plan and every classroom will have a table or a seat available for a student who has to move seats. So what I am saying already is that there are three chances that a student has in our classrooms in order to modify their behaviour. Those three chances will be given quickly, they will be given in a non-confrontational way, and therefore what we are doing is giving that student three opportunities to meet our standards of expectation of behaviour. However, if indeed after three warnings, those behaviours are not changed, that student will move on to a T, the T of SWAT. And very simply, what that means is that student will be transferred from the classroom. What happens is that member of staff just contacts reception via a system we have in school and a member of the senior leadership team, me for example, will be arriving at that classroom, we always have walkie talkies on us and then very quickly, very quietly, with no shouting, with no fuss, that student will be asked to leave the classroom with their bag and their equipment and they will be taken to another room. That room is where they will spend the rest of that lesson working in isolation. They will carry on with their classwork and at the end of that lesson, they will then carry on with their normal school day.
But importantly, what happens if a student is transferred from the classroom is that that subject teacher will phone the parents or carers that night and talk through what went wrong in that lesson. The follow up of that is if a student is transferred, they will automatically be placed in a 40 minute after school detention the following day. Parents and carers will be informed about this via email um, and a phone call if needed, but that is the system that we use. Now, I'm very conscious that some people might be thinking that's a very strict, um, a very harsh system, um, and I make no apologies for having a very strict, consistent system in school. And I always say to parents and carers is that actually, the vast majority of our students at the morning school are never transferred from lessons because they know what our expectations are and they meet those expectations. So your child's education is too important to us to allow an individual student to consistently disrupt the learning of your child. Every child will be given opportunities, every child will be supported at the morning school, but if they do not meet our expectations, then they will be taken from that lesson. And if that is something that happens on a consistent basis, we will put in all the support that is needed. But if somebody cannot meet the expectations of the morning school way, then we will obviously have conversations about whether this is the right school for somebody. It's worth stating that over 95% of our school throughout this academic year, albeit a rather strange one, and last academic year when SWAT was introduced, never got transferred from a lesson. Or if they did, they were transferred maybe once or twice throughout the whole academic year. So it just goes to show that the vast majority of our students meet the morning school way standards, those very high standards, on a daily basis. But moving on to more positive things, something that I personally and the school value just as much as educational outcomes is personal development. And as a result of that, what we have at the start of every single day when a student goes to their tutor is a personal development lesson. Now, no longer are period one tutor sessions something where registers are just taken and equipment is checked. Now, those things happen, but they happen very, very quickly at the start of every single day during period one. The period one lesson is actually called the morning school way lesson and there is a structured curriculum that your child will be following every single morning. On a Monday morning they will be learning about a very key famous historical individual whose amazing achievements have affected the world that we live in and whose achievements actually we can see in the morning school way. On a Tuesday for example they will have a live assembly delivered by their head of house and that will talk about key moral, social, personal issues. There will also be on another day a personal and social health education lesson and there will also be what we call collective reading taking place twice a week. From term one, every single student in year seven, eight and nine will be listening to a text being read by our teachers. They will be following that text, they will follow that story and then what we will discuss are the, the values, the characters, and everything that goes within that story that we see being mirrored in the Morning School way. So there is a very clear structure. There are other year groups that are expected to do other things with regards to their personal development. The Year 7 students, for example, listening right now, from your start in September, you will be expected to follow something called a personal development pathway. You'll be expected to choose a club or an activity to attend on a regular basis. And we would expect you to take part in that throughout the whole school year. That could be a lunchtime club or it could be an after school club. It could be a sport club, it could be a drama club. There's a whole range of activities but the, the expectation is that all of our students will participate in an extracurricular activity in addition just to coming to school and sitting in your lessons every day because developing personally is just as important as developing academically. That will progress. By the end of year seven students will also have the opportunity to join our own Sea Cadet Corps unit that we have in school. We have cadets who are pupils in our school that are enrolled in the Sea Cadet Corps. We have parade night every Wednesday. We have a member of staff who is a sub-lieutenant in the uh, Sea Cadet Corps unit. And that is a unit that is growing in popularity all of the time. So there is an opportunity for students to be a part of that. 
in order to improve their personal development. When the students get into year nine, there is also an expectation as part of the morning school way that every student takes part in the Duke of Edinburgh Bronze Award Scheme. We have always run this award scheme historically in the school, but from this academic year starting in September, every student when they reach year nine will be expected to take part in the Bronze Award Scheme. And then hopefully that will continue as they progress through the school and hopefully into sixth form if necessary to achieve the gold award. So that's why personal development is so important to us. We place an awful lot of importance and curriculum time on that personal development of our young people. And the last thing I want to talk about is praise. On a regular basis, your child will be praised when necessary. If they are behaving and working in a lesson in a way which shows that they are enjoying themselves and they are being successful, if they are making an outstanding contribution to a lesson, regardless of their starting point, regardless of the class that they are in, if they are showing fantastic behaviour, if they are showing the Morning School way, they will be issued with reward points. Now those reward points accumulate throughout the whole year and they will they equal prizes and certificates and recognition as the year goes on. And something else that we will do, which is very popular with our students and uh, young people, is the public praise that we offer at the Morling School. Some of you may already have seen or listened to some of the assemblies that we hold. As part of those assemblies, we every term produce something called the Morling School Way Gallery of Excellence. If a student produces an outstanding piece of work, that teacher will actually take a picture of that work and they will email it out to all of the other teachers and the best pieces of work actually make it onto a video. Now these videos are then posted on our website, they're posted on Facebook, they're posted on YouTube and that work is publicly praised. In addition to that, that work is also put into something that we call our corridor of excellence. Every department in the school, every subject has their own notice board in one corridor of the school and within that corridor every term the best work that is produced from year 7 all the way through to year 11 is displayed in that corridor of excellence and that is something that I would like all of our year 7s in September to strive to get their work in either the Corridor of Excellence or the Gallery of Excellence because that public praise is something that is very very powerful. And the last thing that some of you may well be receiving after September is a public postcard of praise from Mr. Venner, the head teacher. So if he realises that you have done exceptional work, if your work has made it into the Corridor of Excellence or the Gallery of Excellence, if you have got very good effort grades, if you have done something which shows the Morning School way, then Mr. Venner himself will be writing to you and to publicly praise you. Because praise is something that we really value, we are strict, we are consistent, but we are a very caring school and we value positive behaviour much more than anything else. So thank you very much for listening. Um, I'm sure that when I get to meet many of you face to face, if you have any questions, then obviously I'll be very happy to talk about those on, on a pastoral level and uh, I very much look forward to seeing you all in the near future.